extremely short and beaten nails with cuts around the cuticle. In this video I will show you how to transform them so that nobody can ever tell that those are extensions. Coming up! Hello guys, Anastasia here. This is the nails we need to work on today. Short and beaten and on this hand this client was trying to do manicure by herself with nippers so she has many cuts. Also she is working in the kitchen cooking some delicious stuff. That's why most of these cuts including this one on the finger is actually by the knives. So this was the moment when I realized that being a chef is actually quite a dangerous thing. Anyways, now I'm trying to push back the cuticles with a pusher with not much success. It's not really pushing, it's too hard. That's why I'm switching to this bead. It's called Oni Clean. It was originally designed for diabetes and it doesn't have any abrasive. It's basically soft from all sides. So even though it may seem like I'm cleaning the cuticles now, I'm actually not because it doesn't have abrasive. So what I'm doing now, I'm just pushing up the cuticles. Basically, I'm doing the job of the pusher at the moment. It is not painful or sensitive for a client at all as it is smooth from all sides. The speed I'm using now is not too high, about 13,000 rotations per minute. And I'm using it almost the same way as I usually use a flame bit. So first I work on the left side on the forward mode and then I switch to the opposite. Oh my god, check out the size of this pinky, it's just tiny and by pushing up the cuticles we're actually making it a little longer. Now, once we did that, we can actually work with the flame bit and now we can clean all the cuticles from the side walls as well as from the top. I am being super careful in the areas where we already have some cuts because I am definitely not interested in cutting the client even more. Then I'm switching to the right side and doing all the same but in a reverse mode and the speed is a bit higher now, is about 15,000 rotations per minute. And now I'm going to push up the cuticles so it will be easier to trim it. And I will be definitely using scissors instead of the e-file because we already have some pre-existing cuts so it will be just easier for me to do that because with the e-file you cannot really control this area, you kind of need to buff it all. These scissors are very sharp and have a slight curve and this is the shortest blade that I have which is definitely perfect for this client because, I mean, take a look at the size of her fingers, they are like three times smaller than mine and by the way, no, she's not a teenager, she's a young woman, just in case if you were wondering. I'm carefully trimming some hangnails around the nail and then I'm going to buff the sidewalls and the cuticles. So now we will not have any hangnails and also for the dry skin this is the great procedure because it will kind of smooth it all out. And of course the best advice for clients like that would be just try to not bite nails if possible because the more we bite them the less they will grow and the same thing goes for the skin the more we bite it the harder cuticles will be and the more they will try to cover the nails because this is how it works they're just trying to protect the nail by the way if you happen to not have this kind of bead you can also use the buffing bead the one that is originally used for buffing the nail surface because any soft bead will be just great for this kind of work but it should be pretty large so we will not burn the client now let's take off the surface shine which turned out to be a challenge as well because once again the nail is so tiny and also it is all surrounded by the skin 
so I need to push back the sidewalls really good so I can actually do that and also I'm being super careful I'm using 180 grit file because the nails themselves they are already pretty thin so I definitely do not want to over file them and on this nail we even have a little bit of the free edge so let's slightly shape it as well now we did the cuticle care so let's do extensions first we need to do the prep I will apply dehydrator two times because I just want to dehydrate it a little more and yes it's totally fine even if you're touching the skin but that's fine only with a dehydrator please keep that in mind then I'm going to use an acid primer and this is the best solution here but with acid primer you need to be careful do not touch the skin apply a very thin amount and the most important part let dry just make sure it totally dries never apply the product as long as you see that you have these wet spots from the primer still I'm going to use acrylic because this is just the easiest and the best solution for me and also I'm not going to use forms or tips we will be doing sculpting on air and I already shared this technique and got a few questions asking is that okay if we are actually applying the product on the skin because we're not supposed to do that so here's the thing we are not really applying it on the skin we apply it on the nail and then we just carefully uh, extend it from the nail plate so by that time the product is almost hard so this client uh, was very trusting and she just said you can do any length or shape that you think will be just suitable for me and I was like oh my god that is so touching so considering her previous experience which is zero she never had manicures overlays or extensions in her life before and also taking in consideration the original length of her nails I definitely think that we need to do a length like that just the one that will cover up the tips of her fingers and that's it and with these nails I've worked a lot with short and beaten nails I tried different shapes and I think this one which is kind of like oval or super rounded square I don't even know how to call it it just mimics the long natural nail bed and that's exactly what our goal is now so I use a clear pink near the cuticles just to have a natural fade and once the nail will grow out they will look more natural now let's proceed to the next one here I will be using nude color again by the way this is cool pink by entity I really love this color important part is that you need to work with a proper consistency even a bit closer to dry so first I apply the bit on the nail this is important and then I'm carefully blending it and kind of pressing it out to create the free edge if it's not possible to do it in just one take then you can add a couple beads later the reason I'm using this technique is because yes we could use tips but now let's imagine how long will it take another problem is that these nails are pretty wide so once we attach the tip they will also look wide with the forms the same thing it's gonna be quite a challenge cutting trimming and fitting all those forms and we will still end up with a slightly different result and as we are doing the length which is not really long it is quite possible to do that without forms but since we have a short nails I mean they look very short but for this nail beds they are not that short we still need to build a structure so keep in mind that we need to have the thickest part in the middle which is apex area and closer to the cuticle I'm using semi-transparent pink color and the cuticle area as well as the sidewalls always should be super thin all right you guys now goes my favorite moment take a look at this nail now it looks a little bit like a bubble nail right it's kind of wide but now I wait for a few seconds until it's matte and slightly pinched. this is not painful at all by the way and you will see what happens just in a few moments trust me and you're probably wondering what's going on with the tiny pinky nail well here we go this is how are we going to deal with it my left hand 
is super tight right now. I don't know if you can tell it by looking through the camera, but I'm pushing those sidewalls really hard so they will actually stay there. And once the product sets, I will just let go. All right, we are done with the application and this is what we have now. Can you guys believe that this is the hand of the same person? It looks so different now. Now let's file and shape the nails. Even though we do not have much to file, with acrylic you have to file the cuticle area so it will be perfectly smooth. Also, I always like to file the sidewalls a little bit, the shape, so it will be all crisp and smooth and we will definitely not have any product lifting. Also, do not forget to compare each nail so the shape will be consistent from one nail to the other. I am using 180 grit file at the moment and honestly, I rarely use any other abrasive when filing the product. Normally, it's just enough for me. After that, I'm also going to buff the nails with 220 grid buffer and then I always ask my clients to wash their hands and this is what we have now. I mean, I already like the result, but now let's seal it with the top coat. So we decided to not use any other color because by the way, using white or pastel shades will be definitely a bad idea here because they will just make them look wider. So if a client wants color, I would recommend some dark or bright colors. And we just sealed it with a top coat and added a couple stickers with smile and love signs. Let me guys know what do you think. And also I have a question for you. If you've ever dealt with this kind of nails, what length and shape would you recommend for this person if they will just tell you, just do whatever you feel like doing. Thank you so much for watching. If you're a first time here, consider subscribing as I post new tutorials just like this one every week. And I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!